Can I have your attention? Hate to interrupt all the fun with the boring business stuff, but we're going to get started here, I think. Um, first of all, I want to welcome you all to the first ever We Are Tigers Banquet. Appreciate you all coming. I want to thank you for attending. Um, especially want to thank the incredible staff of Johnny B's for uh, letting us have this here and for the fantastic menu. I'm sort of hoping to raise the bar a little bit on, on banquet menus. So enjoy. And, uh, and I did, did want you to know that no We Are Tigers funds paid for this because We Are Tigers is devoted just to the students, to the kids. And that wouldn't be right to do that because this isn't just for the kids. Um, there was a benefactor that thought we should have a banquet and put up the money to do this. Um, so it would not come out of the We Are Tigers account. I just kind of wanted to make that clear up front. We've got a few people that uh, I'd like to recognize and show our uh, tremendous appreciation for. They've been central to everything that We Are Tigers has been able to accomplish. Any successes we've had are their successes, really. You know, and any shortcomings, well, that's on me and my inexperience. But uh, the successes are theirs. First three people I want to call up, I are all coaches. And I joke around and say that I know 400 kids' names and I know maybe seven adults' names that aren't named coach. And that's, actually that's sadly true because I'm not that good with names. For some reason I can remember the kids' names because I guess they're the ones that are important. So if, if you're an adult and I don't know your name, I keep thinking I want to get stickers that say, hi, my name is blank and I belong to and then put your kid's name in there so I'll know who you are. But anyway, the three that have, the three coaches, they've, um, they've consistently helped and consistently supported We Are Tigers projects, but their, real, their biggest contribution, the reason I wanted to recognize them really here, is, uh, is the contribution they've given to me on a more personal level. And they've each seen me through some pretty dark times. And I wanted to say thank you to them, and, and right now I guess I get to call the shots so I can do that. <laughs> so, so anyway. Um, first up, first up, I don't worry, I've only got a few remarks to say. Um, when I was in Scotland years ago before I moved here, I, saw, I read a book and I saw a movie. And it was about an amazing teacher with an even more amazing class of students. And the program that grew out of that. And it was called the Freedom Writers. And uh, I was years away from having any connection to schools or students at all back then and had no idea that I would ever end up in a small town in Mexico and get to meet and get to know and be able to call a friend someone who was involved in that project. Coach T took me under his wing, so to speak, made sure that my learning curve here was an easy one. He's been a friend, he's supported everything we've done. More than that, he's been doing that for years before I ever came here. He's been doing this very same thing, so don't get the idea that it's anything I had to do with. He, he's been doing this all his life, even before. He's been supporting our Tigers, our students. He's been supporting our kids every step of the way. So, T, would you come on up here? And, and, and <laughs> you, know, you got you got Madonna and you got Cher that are known by one name. And you got the King, Elvis, and the Boss known by that title, but this is a man that's known by just one letter. You can say, I went and talked to T, and everybody knows who you're talking about. So, I want you to, pr to present you with, if I can get it off here. See, now this is what I mean by my ineptness, is uh, 
this uh, this weir tigers here. We'll show them show them that too. Yeah. <laughs> Original founding member. Say you sure can, yeah. Say <clears throat> to go along with Jim's story, um, when Francis, when Jim first moved here, he, uh, Francis said, I'm sending you. I just came back from a Washington, D.C. trip with the Freedom Riders. And so she sent Jim to, to write the story on that. And she says, you know, I want you to introduce yourself because he's also going to be the new sports writer. So I had never met him. They sent him to school. I was waiting for some big jock to walk through the halls. <laughs> Anything and but. I was like, sports writer, sports writer. He's like, hey, I'm Jim. I'm the new sports writer here. And so uh, one thing I noticed about Jim right away, it took a little getting used to, but one thing that uh, our, new, our new mission for the schools is students first. And you guys all know how this guy is to put students first. So. Just by him putting this banquet on means a lot, should mean a lot to our community, and I'm very proud to call you a friend. Thank you. Now this next, next gentleman is, oddly has the same name, Coach. I was riding on a team bus once to a basketball game back in, De in Deming, back, I think it was in 17, back when I was still allowed to ride the team bus. That's, that's changed, unfortunately, but that's okay. That's another story. And we were, uh, the, and we lost. Well, the, ti the team lost, the Tigers lost. And this was, you know, before the, well, it was the very beginning of the glory days. And uh, we were heading, heading from, from, the, from the gym to find a place to get a meal. And, you know, the guys on the bus, they were, well, acting like teenagers. You know, they were rowdy and laughing and joking around and making a lot of noise. And they wouldn't shut up, and, and we'd lost. And so we got to the place where we are going to eat and get off the bus, and, and the head coach says, uh, okay, you guys dropped for 25, 25 push-ups right there. And, and, and you know, they're not a single complaint. They all got down and they did them. And they did them, cause they, and they did not complain because they're Tigers. And that's what Tigers do. But... Uh, the thing is, though, too, and, and, and I saw something at the end of that when they got done that has stuck with me forever, is uh, Coach Poche got down and dropped for 25, perfect form, and the guys counted it off how many he was doing. And uh, that's, that has always stuck with me. You know, he dropped for 25, and that was an act of leadership and an act of team and something I'll never forget. And it didn't surprise me, though. You know, when I started covering our Tigers, all their teams, all their activities. Were, I didn't know very many people at all. And even, even fewer of them were adults. But early on, and there were some pretty tough times we went through that first, first year. But Coach, you always stuck with me and stood by me. And you've been an advisor and a supporter and a friend, both me and we are Tigers. And uh, his being here has made it so much better for all of us. And Coach, come on up here. Not sure I could do those 25 push-ups today. <laughs> well, I hope not. You better have eaten some. If that's for you, that's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I think this community owes Jim a huge round of applause for all that he does. The way you get everything out on all these athletes, all the coaches. Yeah. You know, I always Thank say, and I totally mean it, is I get 10 times more from these kids than I could ever give them back. Very rewarding. So, yes. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Well, the next, uh, the next coach, also named coach, must have been a very popular name at one time in this town. Um, he's been a Tiger all his life. I saw a picture of him once as a little kid. We're number 23, holding up a trophy, having just won the Fiesta three-on-three -three basketball tournament, and just had a, just this look of joy on his face. But you only get with little kids, you know, you see that look of joy on their face. And he's just never stopped winning. He's been a huge part of the resurgence in Tiger sports and restoring the roar. The we over me philosophy that's, you know, team building that's been sweeping all of our teams and showing results. 
I remember coming back from that same Deming trip, and after we'd eaten and got back on the bus, and everybody was exhausted. You know, the bus was quiet, everybody was tired, every, half people were sleeping. Sitting across the aisle from me was Coach Bean, working away in the glow of his laptop all the way home. He, uh, everybody else was chilled, kicked back, and he was working. He was statting up the game, working out practice routines, finding ways to correct some of the mistakes he'd seen, working on new plays, and so much more. His push for excellence keeps him up nights and working long hours, hour after hour. And I managed to get a few pictures of him then. Whenever I look at them, I'm reminded of the level of commitment to our Tigers that this man has. And that look of joy never left his face. Coach, come on up here. <laughs> Now this, this, it does say Tigers Forever, Forever Tigers, and uh, Founder OG. <laughs> and then, we are Tigers Founding Member. That's, that's for you. That's Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. These guys have already kind of said it about this man. Ah, Kills himself to be there for these kids. I know growing up, it would have been so cool to have a man like this showing up, ensuring that your faces make it into a newspaper every which way, hundreds of miles away, wee hours of the night. And he's had his own coach being halftime speech too. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have. Couldn't sit down for a week. <laughs> now, I'm going to go off script here a little bit because there was a special presentation that we wanted to make um, to a man that works right here in Johnny B's that's been an outstanding fan and outstanding supporter of, of all the Tigers and especially Tiger basketball. Could you guys come on up here a minute? Um, Vern, are you out there? Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah. Have fun with these guys. Yeah. Well, the next person I was going to ramble on about isn't here, but I'm going to talk about her anyway. When we first did the We Are Tigers T-shirts. It was just, I just wanted to say thank you to the kids. I wanted to, some way to say thank you. And I thought, I know, I'll do a t-shirt and give it, to, give it to my teams, you know, that I cover in the high school and middle school. And I had this idea for a shirt, and it ended up being this one you've probably all seen, you know, this kind of the old classic We Are Tiger shirt. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I was going to give them to the teams, and then I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, it says, you know, many students, one team. Well, all the kids are on. All the kids are tigers. Are all on the same team. So I thought, okay, well, we'll give one to every student in the middle school and high school, and all the teachers, all the staff, all the faculty, everybody. And I wanted just to leave them in a box, front door, with a note saying, you know, anonymous note saying, hey, one for each 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 person in this school. And that was quickly pointed out to me it wouldn't be very practical at all. So I so I had to own it. And then um, we started passing them out, and I quickly realized that I'd really blown it. You know, I'd really screwed up because um, I'd overlooked the elementary schools. And they're Tigers, too. You know, they're Tigers, too. But I didn't have enough money anymore because I'd pretty much spent most of what I had. I didn't have nearly enough to cover doing another, I don't know how many, another thousand shirts. I don't know, Don would probably know how many we did. <laughs> but uh, then a, a really remarkable woman stepped up. And it wasn't the first time she stepped up either to do things for our kids, our, our Tigers. And she asked if she could help. And I told her that she could help, but these shirts will never have any advertising on them. They won't have any company logo, no company name, no nothing. They'll have what they have on them because it's all about the kids. That's who they're for. And she never batted an eye. Just looked at me and said, how much should I make the check out for? And she said, I don't want any fanfare. I don't want it. You know, you t you're still the, the face of this. 
you just keep, you know, just here, here's the money, you just do it. And we did. And, and like she's done so many times, Kathy Vickers stepped up to the plate, you know, was there for our kids. That tea that's up on the mountain that's been spruced up not too long far back, that was her doing. You know, but she never wanted any credit for it. Countless letter times, too. So Kathy certainly is a founding member of We Are Tigers, and I've got a plaque here for her and a jersey there for her, too. Now, sadly, <laughs> the next person I was going to talk about also isn't here. I think he's probably at a, at a school board meeting. Because uh, people ask, you know, where do you, and I, and I tell them, I come up with all kinds of crazy ideas, and then other people step up, make them happen, make them possible. And uh, this next gentleman has done that time and time again. I don't know how many times I've seen him carrying in a huge stack of pizzas to sell at the concession stand, and I doubt that the team had to pay for those. Probably all the money from those sales went to the team. You know, and, and time and time again, when the, when, the, when the pandemic hit and the face masks all became the thing we had to wear, and it's kind of nice to see it um, here now, <laughs> I, I just wanted a Weir Tigers mask. I just wanted one to wear myself, you know. And, and, and then the word got out and all these people were saying, oh, I want one too, I want one too. So we thought, okay, let's, let's do it. And I found a company that could make them. And uh, Coach T and Coach Bean and, and, and Doug Whitehead all kicked in some money to help get that started. And I was sitting in Doug's office and, and uh, talking about it. And he asked how much, how much it would cost, you know, how much it would cost. And it was a lot. And he asked how much money we had. And I said, <laughs> not nearly enough. He just reached into his wallet and tossed me his credit card and said, yeah, here, just put it on that and bring it back to me when you're done. You know, that's the kind of person he is. Just go ahead and do it. Doug's office is one of my regular stops, and he always takes time to help and to listen, offer advice and counsel and work out details, brainstorm, and then help to make things happen. And I'm honored to call him a We Are Tigers founding member, too. And, of course, we've got the, his plaque, and we'll get that to him. Excuse me. <clears throat> now, after what I always call the big T-shirt giveaway, the We Are Tigers shirt that we gave away, um, to me the obvious question was, well, what's next? You know, because there's always a what's next. You know, and the idea of moving forward, if if all the students are on one team, if all the schools and all the students are on one team, well, then so is the community. You know, so is the community. And so the idea of Tiger Day was conceived as a way to bring the students and community closer together and remind them that everyone, that we all are Tigers. And I told the students that all their teams, all their activity groups, they could all have a booth and they could showcase, you know, what they do as a team or their activity. They could have the interactive games. They could, I told them you can do anything you want to do as long as it doesn't get me arrested. You can do whatever you like. And we told community groups they could come in and they could give things away. They could do promotional material, educational stuff, whatever they wanted except they couldn't sell anything because it was going to be a free event. And we set it up so that uh, everybody that came in got a free meal. We had it cooked on site thanks to some amazing people that came in with their grills, cooked us up burgers and dogs, and we gave them away and gave away a book bag to everybody that came in. And uh, that was, but in organizing that, we realized, okay, we need to have a bank account because we're going to need to raise some money for this. And we wanted to have a way for people to write checks to We Are Tigers. So we had to start a bank account and uh, didn't want it to just be one name on that account. It was going to be a business account. It was going to be a business account, but that was too much, too, too much trouble, too many hoops to jump through. So it was a personal account doing business as We Are Tigers. And there was only one person I could think of as a second person. Nobody else was ever considered to be on that account with me. And that was Connie Kane. And she's been a tiger all her life. And uh, she taught me about that and what it meant to be a tiger, what it meant to have tiger heart. So uh, if anybody deserves the title of founding member of We Are Tigers, oh gee, it's, uh, it's Connie Kane. Get up. Connie, get up here. See, now I see, I had to put you in the spotlight sometime. Um. Okay, but I don't do pictures. I know you don't. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do this time. This is one time. No. Thanks so much. 
Oh, he's, he's gotten 14. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he bet if he was me, he'd have 57 by now. <laughs> oh, there is. There's one thing in his last script, too, that I do have to do, and I think some of you probably know what it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know that I'm not, not sick, just obsessed. <laughs> anyway, um, when I first came here, Sierra County, I was only going to stay a few weeks. You know, I was interviewing and applying for jobs all over the country, mostly at colleges and universities. And the, but the day I arrived at Las Palomas to stay, I was going to stay with my brother-in-law and his wife. They have a farm there. And they had a line shack set up so that I could stay in for a few weeks. And, and uh, when I got there, two amazing things happened. One is that I was unloading my, my blazer into the shack. I had this just overwhelming sense that I was supposed to be here for some reason. I didn't know what it was, but I just felt like I'm supposed to be here. In fact, I remember saying, this is where I make my stand. And of course, I was sitting down at the time in a chair on the front porch, but still, you get the idea. The other amazing thing that happened is my phone rang. And it was a college in Northern California, Butte College offering me my, my dream job, to be the number two at the college libraries. Great pay, great benefits, help with housing until I found <coughs> what I wanted, just the whole nine yards, everything. And all I could think of was I wanted to find a way to stay until I could figure out why it is I felt like I was supposed to be here. So I scrambled around for a day and put him off and found a job at the hospital so I could call him and say, you know, no, I don't want the job. I'm going to stay here. And after three months at the hospital, the, they fired me. Only time I've ever been fired, and it was the best thing they've ever done for me. <laughs> Second best thing was hired me, but the first best thing was fire me. So I scrambled around for a couple of weeks trying to find some way, because the job was gone now in California, and I still didn't know why in the world I thought I was supposed to be here, and started to think, <laughs> I was probably out of my head when I thought that, but who knows. And after a couple of weeks, I finally walked into a newspaper office that somebody told me that they were hiring, and I applied for a job. And it was the strangest application you've ever seen. <laughs> It had questions like, what would you rather do? Be attacked by wild bears or, 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 a, pa or a pack of killer bees? I thought, oh, boy. And, and, and um, describe how you'd make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And, and then the, the really dangerous question was, which way do you hang the toilet paper? Over or under? And I thought, oh, there's a dangerous question. But then, no, I realized, no. Because if they hang it wrong here, I don't want to work here. <laughs> So I, I gave them the application, and they said, can you wait a few minutes? I, I can wait a few minutes. I don't got a job. <laughs> and uh, pretty soon a woman comes out, and uh, later learned was Frances Luna. And she said, she looked at me and said, I really liked your story. And I'm thinking, what, what story? What the hell is she talking about? You know, and, and, uh, I, and then it dawned on me, oh, the peanut butter sandwich, okay. And um, she, said, uh, she said, I've got one job. It's to cover sports, the high school sports, and, and cover the schools. And, and I looked at it, and this is God's honest truth. I looked at it and said, I've never been interested in sports in my life. <laughs> and, and that's the truth. That's the truth. In my, in my 30s, I got interested in, in, in NBA basketball. In, uh, actually, the Detroit Pistons, bad boys. And it, it helped me get through my first divorce. <laughs> and, uh, but other than that, I had I'd never attended a sporting event in my life. I watched basketball, but that was it on TV. You know? So I thought, and, but then I, I, but I said to her, you know, I do know one thing, that in small town America, high school sports is supreme, and it's personal. And I told her, I can write personal, and I can learn about sports. So she said to me, and, and there's some dispute about this, but I'm going to get to make this the official record. <laughs> there, and she said, uh, well, I'll take a chance if you will. And uh, I think it worked out pretty well. Anyway, she let me do the job the way I thought it should be done, let me run with it, and never looked back. And I was able to do everything I've been able to do because of, because of that, because we're taking that chance. When Tiger Day came around, she helped. When Tiger Day 2 came around, she stepped up big time and made, it, made, made sure it happened. Without her support, let, her, let me commandeer people in the office to sell shirts and sell face masks and do design work that my friend Dylan over here does. A lot of design work. She's designed, she designed the basketball shirt. And she's done a whole lot more than that. Without all that, that with Francis's blessing, you know, I couldn't do what I do. Anyway, Francis, I'm proud to call you a We Are Tigers fan. Thank you. Yes. 
So it's uh, pretty funny that Jim says he didn't know anything about sports because he really, really didn't. And uh, that's why I called DT. I was like, uh, go see Daniel and he'll help you out. So um, he has been through some dark times and there have been some very important people that have helped him through that. But I will say it's the kids right here who uh, he lives for. He uh, gave up a job with an expense account for a job that has no expense account. And uh, I'm so grateful for you. Every day, uh, I'm glad that the kids give you more than you could give them because you give us so much more than you will ever know. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. It ain't about me, it's about y'all. Were these printed in my office? Ah, no. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> I think, uh, I think maybe somebody that worked for you did a bunch of work for me. Um, that's been really special. I thank you so much. Now lastly, and also mostly, is the man who was there before the beginning, before there was anything like We Are Tigers. Don was there before the beginning. When I had the idea for those first t-shirts, those first We Are Tigers t-shirts, I, <coughs> I knew that the father of, of one of my kids, one of my tigers, printed shirts and mall with like eight billion other things he does at his shop. So I went to see him and he took my design and he made it actually look good and made it into something that would work as a shirt and be something maybe people would actually want. And he ordered up what, maybe 2,000 shirts altogether? And uh, I paid for the raw shirts. I didn't pay for the screens, I didn't pay for the ink or the God, hundreds of hours of his time printing them. You know, cause, and, and all the work he put in. I think Doug helped a little bit on some of that printing. But uh, Don did it. Don did all that. And he did it because he's always loved and supported our kids. Now, I said Doug's office is always on my, one of my regular stops. Well, when I'm thinking up a We Are Tigers program or project, you know, Don Hearn's shop is always my first stop. And I've, I've told him, Don, you see my car pull in, you need to lock the door, Flip the clothes sign and pretend you're not there because it's going to mean you taking on a bunch more work. And I, I am thankful for you every single day. You know, but uh, he never locks it. He's always there. And he's always busy, but he always takes time and always steps up to the plate because it's for the kids. Excuse me. Don, probably more than anyone, you're responsible for whatever We Are Tigers has accomplished. You are our founding OG. And uh, actually, you know, I, I was sitting in your office when we had the idea for the some of these the Tees for Tigers t-shirts we're, we're doing now. And I thought, i got to give this guy something. And I, I said to you, because I was thinking about this jacket that the basketball team gave me, and I thought, oh, maybe I can do something like that. I said, Don, you should get yourself a jacket. You know, just kind of threw it out there to see, what, see, see if he bit. You know, and I, thought, oh, I don't wear jackets. I wear hoodies. That's why we designed these. <laughs> Anyway, Don, come on up here. You deserve so much. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. You guys are lucky to have him. He's a good guy. <laughs> oh, my God. That's such a, that's such a soft word. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thanks so much. I'm almost done, don't worry. I got two more things to give out. And uh, they're the most important ones. I saved those for last because of the most important. Because they're who uh, We Are Tigers is dedicated to. They're our tigers, our students, our kids. And they're the, ti they're the recipients of the Tiger Heart Scholarships. The first Tiger Heart Scholar is Karina Apodaca. Just, uh, Come on up here, come on up here. I'll make, you, I'll make you stand here. Make you look, make me look good. Oh, yeah. That's just. Um, Karina was the captain of the Tiger volleyball team that went to the state championship semifinals this year. She was instrumental, in my estimation, as being a sports expert, you know, um, in bringing that team together as a cohesive unit, as a real team, as family. I'm watching them this year, I saw a team that worked together as one. They really seem to enjoy competing with each other. They seem to enjoy cheering each other on and taking joy in their achievements and supporting each other in adversity. 
But a lot more than that, a lot more important to me than that, is I've seen Karina, when she's been interacting with others not on the court, when there aren't any fans around, nobody's cheering, nobody's doing nothing, you're just interacting with people. And I see how you treat customers when you, when you serve customers, that right here. And uh, it shows what your heart is. And it's a great big tiger heart. I'm proud to present you with a tiger heart scholarship. Thanks so much. Well, the other Tiger Heart Scholar, Nathan Salcedo. Come on up. I ain't going to do this all alone. I met Nathan his first year on the boys' basketball team. He, and now he's just finished up a stint with the team as a co-captain and a key piece in earning state championship for the second time in his career with that basketball team. But far more than that, and sorry coach, I think far more important than that, is who he is as a person, who he aspires to be, the kind of person he aspires to be. With some of his friends, he launched an initiative called Creative Thinkers of Tomorrow to do peer mentoring, counseling, support students in pursuing their passions and fulfilling their potential. In all he's done, he's tre exhibited tremendous Tiger Heart. Nathan, I'm so proud to know you and name you as a Tiger Heart. <laughs> I'm nearly done, then you can start enjoying yourself again. <clears throat> when I was young, I knew everything, and I was going to change the world. Then as I got older and stupider, I began to understand that change and change in the world was something we all can accomplish. If each one of us, if each one of us just finds one thing that we can do that will make a difference, then we will change the world. It just requires good people stepping up. Well, each of these eight people I've called forward have stepped up big time. And they were doing so long before I ever arrived on the scene. You know, it wasn't me that did it, it was them. It was the, all of you, all of you. Because each one of those eight people represent eight more. And behind them, there's 80 more. Parents and family, community members, people in the community that have supported these kids all their lives. I've only been here for not even quite six years. You know, but these people have been doing it all their lives. You know, this is a community that will bend every effort for our Tigers, for our kids. Some people say that I've got rose-colored glasses on when I talk about our students, our Tigers. But I'll tell you, I don't. I remember long ago when I was that age. Now I know, I know kids make mistakes. And they do stupid things. They stumble and fall sometimes. Sometimes they even do things that are flat out wrong. But you know what? So do I. And so do most of you. So does just about everybody. But you know what? I cut them a heck of a lot more slack than I'll ever cut myself for the very same thing. Because they're kids. They're supposed to. You know? So people say, you know, they say, well, you're a cheerleader. And I'm, no, I'm not a cheerleader. You know, there's some Tiger cheerleaders, and I've often said they're some of the most, you know, skilled, determined, hardworking, and frankly, courageous athletes to wear Tiger uniforms. So they've already got cheerleading covered. I always figured, I'm just a drummer. I just beat on a drum. And if I beat on that drum long enough, then somebody's going to pick up a guitar, and then a bass. And somebody else will sit on the keyboards and start playing. Somebody else will pick up a horn and a fiddle, and a couple people will jump up and start singing pretty soon. So I'll have some beautiful songs. So if anyone ever wants to plant a tombstone in my grave, when the time comes, all it needs to say is, he beat on a drum. And that's all we your Tigers is, is just beating on a drum to remind people who we are, what we've been, who we aspire to be, and to remind them what's important. And to me, and I'm certain to all of you, the ones that are the most important are the ones who are our future, our kids. Well, the one thing that they know, and they all know it, is the only limitation is your imagination. And they also all know that we are Tigers. Well, thank you all for attending. And I think you should all give yourselves a great big round of applause and, and to, to our host, Johnny Bees. But thank you all for coming. As you were. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Charlie.
Raise the bar, sir. <laughs>